I want to spell out a particular system that I think could be very useful to most, if not all people. And so this is, at least for sake of this example, a 21-day system. I picked 21 days because that seems to be the average or most typical system for engaging neuroplasticity as it relates to the formation of new habits. This 21-day system actually is one that someone I know very well uses and has used for a long time. Their kids use it as well. And it has a certain elegance to it. And I think um, as I describe it, that elegance will, will begin to reveal itself. So basically what this involves is you set out to perform six new habits per day across the course of 21 days. Why six and why 21? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. But the idea is you write down six things that you would like to do every day for 21 days. However, the expectation is that you'll only complete four to five of those each day. So built into this is a kind of permission to fail, but it's not failure because it turns out that this approach to forming habits is based not so much on the specific habits that you're trying to form, but the habit of performing habits. It's the habit of doing a certain number of things per day. So you set out to perform six. Now, another reason for not necessarily performing all six is that some activities probably shouldn't be performed each day. For instance, in my case, if I were to weight train or even run every day, I'm of the sort or my biology is of the sort that I don't recover so well. So I wouldn't want to do resistance training every day, but I might want to do it four days a week, for instance. So by having six things in that list, I could shuffle out that particular activity on particular days of the week and simply do four or five other activities. So 21 days, you list out four to five things. So it might be zone two cardio, resistance training, sunlight viewing, um, writing, Uh, It could be journaling. It could be learning a language, mathematics. Again, this is going to vary depending on your particular goals and the habits that you're trying to create. But no more than six. And the expectation is that you're not going to perform more than four to five. If you miss a day, meaning you don't perform four to five things, there is no punishment. And in fact, it's important that you don't actually try and do what in the literature is called a habit slip compensation, which is just fancy psychological language for if you screw up and you don't get all four or five in one day, you don't do eight the next day in order to compensate. This actually brings me back to an example I had from graduate school. I remember when I started graduate school feeling very excited, but a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of things that I had to do because I had to both do research. I was doing coursework at the time, graduate student stipends, and still now, unfortunately, were uh, depressingly low. So it was financially stressful. There were a number of things happening. And I remember a a neurologist, this was at UC Berkeley, it's really fantastic scientist and person. His name is Bob Knight. Some of you may know him. I went to him and I asked, you know, what is the process by which someone actually navigates graduate school successfully? And, And he said, listen, you don't want to do anything or engage in a routine in any way that you can't keep up consistently for at least five and ideally six days per week. I thought, oh, that's pretty good. And he said, every four or five years, you might have to update that, but you need to decide what you can do consistently, what you can do every day or at least six days a week or five days a week. And that was very, very useful to me. And it fits well with this notion of habit slips that if you happen to screw up and not be able to engage in whatever habits you're trying to learn for whatever reason, that the next day you just get right back on on the horse, so to speak. However, there's a really interesting feature from the neuroscience literature and from the psychology literature that says that chunking this 21 days into two-day bins can be very, very useful. While it is true that the unit of the day that our cells use is a circadian one, a 24-hour clock, There does seem to be something powerful about engaging in particular habits in a particular sequence for two days in a row and then resetting. So thinking, okay, I can do this for a day. And if I can do it for a day, I can probably do it for two days and then resetting. So every two days you're resetting. So you're kind of chunking this 21 days into a series of two day bins in which you are trying to perform four to five new habits and then completing that 21 days. Now, everything I've described about this 21 day program with six things that you're trying to do as new habits and only performing four to five and not compensating, et cetera. There's nothing neuroscientifically unique about it, except for the fact that it's not just 21 days broken up into two day chunks. After 21 days, you stop engaging in this 21 day deliberate four to five things per day type schedule. And you simply go into autopilot. 
you ask yourself how many of those particular habits that I was deliberately trying to learn in the previous 21 days are automatically incorporated into my schedule? How many of them am I naturally doing? In other words, every 21 days, you don't update and start adding new habits. You simply try and maintain the ones that you've built in that first 21 days. And this I think is extremely important because in all of the habit literature that I could find, sure, there was a lot of psychological data, neuroscience data, behavioral science data around, here's how you form a habit. Here's how you break a habit. There was even some kind of tests for whether or not a habit had really achieved context independence, whether or not it was a strongly formed habit. But there wasn't a lot of information, at least by my search, of what to do once you've formed a habit and how to evaluate whether or not that habit is likely to persist long into the future. So here's the idea. You set out these six things that you would like to learn or that you would like to acquire in your life, these habits. You only expect that you're gonna perform four or five each day. You do that for 21 days. Again, if you miss a day, you just hop right back on the next day. However, you should think about the functional units within this 21 day period as two days. You're gonna try and nail four to five of these things for two days. If you happen to get all six, great, but that's not necessarily required. So you can do it for two days, then reset two days, then reset two days. And then in the next 21 days, you're not trying to acquire any new habits. You're not gonna throw in six more habits that you want to learn. You're simply going to assess how well, how deeply you've rewired your nervous system to be able to perform those six habits of the previous 21 days. And this is extremely useful, I believe, because it will allow you to assess whether or not you can indeed make room if you even have room for more habits, right? Many people are trying to cram so many new behaviors into their nervous system that they don't stand a chance of learning all those behaviors. What you may find is that you kept up two of those things very consistently throughout the 21 days. And perhaps there was one of them that you did sporadically and that there were three others that frankly, you didn't manage to execute. You may also be one of these people, one of these mutants that sets out to do six new things per day for 21 days and performs every single one of them. Terrific, more power to you. In that case, for the following 21 days, let's see whether or not you can continue to perform those very same six things every day for 21 days. And then, and only then, would you want to add more habits in. So you could repeat this 21 day process, you know, 21 days of, of new habit, 21 days of testing those new habits as whether or not they're reflexive or not. You could do that forever if you wanted. But the idea is that this isn't something that you're doing all year long. It's that you perhaps starting the new year or regardless of when you're listening to this, you set out to make that 21 day, really the stimulus period in which the habits get wired in. And then the following month and maybe even the following months or periods of 21 days are really the kind of thermometer or the test bed of how well you've embedded those particular habits. And if indeed you want to continue to add new habits or you find that certain habits that you weren't able to embed in your nervous system and make reflexive, you want to then bring those in, fantastic. But it's only once you've achieved all those six habits as reflexive that you would move forward. And I think this sort of system, while it could have been replaced with many other different systems, Again, there's nothing holy about the system, but this particular system has a number of features, the lack of compensation for missed days, the fact that it's a fairly high intensity program for 21 days, but then you test yourself, a kind of a competition test with yourself, if you will. Those features and the fact that habit slips, missing of particular habits and not doing all six is kind of built into the system, I think makes it a very reasonable one. It's very uh, adaptable to the real world. And I think it's one that provided you obey the phase one, phase two, phase three type system that we talked about earlier. You collapse these two programs um, with one another, which hopefully will be easy based on the descriptions I've given. Well, if you do that, and I think there's a very high probability that the habits that you try and form will achieve this context dependence and that it will take progressively less and less limbic friction to perform them.